recording. This is Dr. Dadu here presenting elementary probability one. Happy listening. The requirements for this video is for you to have seen set one, two, three. Well, a textbook that can assist you for further understanding similar issues, the Sham Outline series text. So we begin with the basic concept, I mean the basic definitions. A random experiment is an experiment whose outcome cannot be predetermined, e.g., the flip of a coin. Prior to the flip, I cannot tell whether it's going to come up a head or a tail. Now, sample space, the list of all probable outcomes of a random experiment, the sample space. Random event, that's a subset of the sample space. Any sample of the samples that is of interest to us. The probability of the event, that's a numerical value that quantifies uh, the chances of occurrence of the event. Later, you'll find that that's cardinality of the event over cardinality of the sample space. Well, examples. The flip of a fair coin. The word fair there, uh, this is an unloaded coin, an unbiased coin, a coin that is well behaved. Now, if you flip a fair coin, the sample space will be eight for head, T for tail. When there are two coins, this is the scenario. When there are three coins, that is the case. Imagine if there are six or more coins. You see, it becomes cumbersome, and it will be full of trying to list. So we must try to evolve a way of knowing the cardinality of the sample space without having to list. And that takes us to the principle of counting. Well, the fundamental principle of counting is a procedure, if a procedure can be uh, performed in N1 different ways, and if following that, procedure two can be performed in N2 different ways, and if following that, procedure three can be performed in N3 different ways, dot, dot, dot. Then the number of ways, we the produce, procedures can be performed in that order. It's N1 times N2 times N3 times dot, dot, dot. Well, factorial notation. N is natural. N factorial means take product from N down to one. Well, permutation. An element of a set of N objects in a given order. It's called a permutation. Well, if, R, if there are R of them, then N have to be less than or equal to half, then we see it's n permutation half, which we denote by p of n of r, I mean p of n comma r. And that boils down to algebra to n factorial divided by n minus one factorial. What about combination? Suppose we have a collection of n objects. The combination of this n object taken r at a time is n combination half. And that would be n choose r or n choose n minus r. And that's the simpleness n factorial divided by r factorial n minus r factorial. Well, if there's n objects of which n1 I like, n2 I like, this is the situation. This is the number of ways you can arrange them in a row. Okay. Examples. Question one is left as exercise because it's the easiest of the of the trial. Well, two. How many four digit numbers can be formed using the digits eight, four, three, five, nine without repetition? Well, we want four digit number form, so we create four offices. Well, any of the five can fill the first office. Five, followed by any of the four filling the second office, followed by any of the three, remaining three filling the third office down the line like that, such that the number of ways of filling it will be five times four times down to two, and that will be simple as five factorial, which is 120 ways. Then question three. In this family, there are 10, I mean, three boys, two girls, two dogs, three cats. And then you want a party of three being formed. Well, it will be a 10 choose three situation for the cardinality of the sample space. Okay. Then how many parties can be formed? That's 10 choose three. How many parties will consist of humans only? For humans only, there are five humans in there, so it's five choose three for humans only. Then, how many of such parties will consist of humans only with at least one member of each sex? There are two sexes, so it will be either 
three choose one for boy, one boy, that is. And that will be for um, two choose two for the girls. Or three choose one for the boy. I mean, three choose two for the, uh, for the boys and two choose one for the girls. It's either this or that. When it is or, you need to add. When it is and, that is the conjunction, then you are going to be multiplying. The solution is here, okay? This is the situation that we've just seen. Then it says uh, humans animal, but with animals more than human. You see that there are no humans in there, all are animals, or there's just one human, then two animals. For the example, how many ways can we arrange the letters of the word Mississippi? Coincidentally, there are no lines for these two words, and they are statically chosen. Uh, the solution is provided for Mississippi. The Mississippi contains 11 alphabets. M repeats once, I repeats it four times, and dot, 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 like that. So it's a case of M factorial divided by one factorial divided by four factorial for the I's, divided by four factorial for the S's, divided by two factorial for the P's. Now, look at the situation of the says a group of 15 men that just dot, dot, dot. Since teachers only, how can we compute the probability for teachers only? We'll say first, how many people are in there? 15. So we need the cardinality of the sample space first. So it's a case of 15 choose three for the sample space. Now, teachers only, there are six teachers. So it will be six choose three for that event. Divided by the sample space, that's the uh, probability for that event. Then at least one teacher means probability of one minus no teacher. No, sorry, at least one architect means one minus no architect. So we go in there, remove all the architects in there, and there will be 10 left. So it will then choose three for no architect divided by the sample space. And you remove that from one to no to have at least one architect. Men of each position, then it will be six choose one for teachers, four choose one for architect, five choose one for lawyers, divided by the sample space and the cardinality of the sample space. No lawyers. When you remove the number of lawyers, then there, are, there will be 10 left. So again, out of those 10, you are choosing three. So it's 10 choose three divided by 15 choose three. More lawyers than teachers are uh, architects. And that's the situation would be like this on the analysis. Now, properties of probability, where if there's an event A that is contained in the sample space, then its probability is really trapped between zero and one. Now, probability of the null set is zero because it's an impossibility. Probability of S is one because it's a shorty that we always occur. If event A and B are mutually exclusive, then the intersection will be null. Ordinarily, the probability of event A and B will probability of B plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. But if they are mutually exclusive, it reduces to this. Now, a four-digit number is randomly from using each of the digits here only once. Four digits out of, and we are given six digits. So the probability that any of such number is odd. Well, what determines the state of the numbers? Since we want four digital, we are creating four orchids as well. Now, the occupier of the last orchid determines whether the digit is odd or even. So we are going to go in here and look for the odd digits. One, three, five, seven, four of them. Either of the four, I'm sorry, any of the four will occupy the last digit of it. Then after that is occupied, the remaining five can occupy the first digit. If after which the remaining four will occupy the second digit, after which the remaining three will occupy the third digit. We'll take the product and that's it. And the similarity of that is done for the other questions. See, that's done. Okay. The one that is of interest that I need to talk about is the situation in which it says all digits are prime and the number being formed is less than 3,000. Now, 
And there's a possibility that they intercept to E1 and, insert, uh, and E2 intercepts. So e, the intersection of E1 and E2 is not empty. So we need to look at what that will be. It means all the digits are, coincidentally, there are four digits in there. And for the number being formed to be less than 3,000, there's only two that can occupy the first digit position. After we three will occupy the second, two will occupy the third, and one will occupy the last. If you take the product, that is six. Six over the sample space, is, which is 360, is equal to one over 60. So use the method of combining, I mean, the formula for probability of E1 union E2, and that will fetch you 23 over 60. Well, that's the farthest we shall go now. Watch out for the elementary probability too. Bye for now. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much. <laughs>